If you are invested in tech stocks, you've probably seen a dismal performance of late. Well, you are not alone. The Nasdaq, which tracks the top 100 tech stocks in the world, has been um, underperforming and is down by 13% year to date. The Dow Jones, used for tracking the top 30 blue chip stocks, are down 5.08% year to date. The S&P 500, used for tracking the top 500 companies in the US is currently down 7.08%. Easy to see just by looking at the NASDAQ why the tech market has been being punished lately, right? But if we go a little bit further and look at the blockchain, you'll see that Bitcoin is also down. Bitcoin is down 20.33% year to date to $38,000 and even dipped much lower than that. Ethereum is down 30.76% year to date to $2,600 and so on. If we listen to the sage advice from the OG Warren Buffett, his advice is that be greedy when the market is fearful and be fearful when the market is greedy. So what am I going to do if the market does eventually crash even further? If we, in, if we end up in a crypto winter, what am I going to do? I cannot, tell what, I cannot tell you what you should do. I'm not a financial advisor, but I can only tell you what my opinion is and what it is that I'm going to do if the market should continue dipping. Welcome everyone to my Tube of the U channel. Let's not waste any more time and get right into it. Just a little disclaimer up front. I'm not a financial advisor. I can only give you my opinion. If you have not yet liked and subscribed, please do so. Please be mindful that the subscription does not come with any associated fees. It's just so that you get notifications as soon as my next video drops. What happened? Well, COVID for a start the US decided to pump $6 trillion into the economy, or 91.9 quadrillion rand. No, that is not a made-up number. For more perspective, it is actually 91,920 trillion rand. Okay, so $900 billion of that $6 trillion went to households in the US in the form of stimulus checks, right? So $900 billion is the equivalent of 13.8 trillion rand. Right. The stimulus check amount was about $1,400 per month or 21,448 rand per month. Why is this relevant? Ever heard of inflation? More inflation, right? So what happened was due to the stimulus checks, people had a lot more money on hand. Uh, with more money, they were able to buy more, save more and invest more. Now the investing portion had the positive impact of improving the growth in the stock market. So we've seen unprecedented growth in the stock market like we've never seen before. However, Roni Rona obviously caused some significant supply chain issues, meaning that companies were not able to get all the supply necessary into their company, uh, into their country, right? So um, with the additional income, people buying more, there isn't enough supply now to meet the demand. The moment that happens, simple economics will tell you that the suppliers will start pushing up their price because they've got a lot more market participants interested in the product, but they don't have enough product to meet the actual demand. It is an oversimplification as there are a lot more other factors that would have resulted in higher inflation, right? But this is simply for the purposes of explaining the impact that the stimulus check and the money that the US economy has printed to inject in, into the economy, which is, which is what has caused the ripple effect, which I'll get into into more detail now. In a nutshell, inflation is simply taking a bundle of goods that you would have been able to purchase for using $100 in 2020, right? If that same bundle of goods costs you 7% more in the following year, then that is what the effect of inflation is. So it's costing, you will need $107 now to buy the same bundle of goods that you bought the previous year. Now in the US, the inflation was typically around one to 2%, but for 2021, they ended up on 7%, which is the highest they've seen in a long time. The market does not like inflation. In addition, if the Fed in the US decides to hike up rates in order to combat inflation, Americans will have to spend a lot more to repay their car loans, their home loans, their student loans, any other 
loan or borrowing that's linked to the current interest rate. Less money to spend and invest what people typically do is they start to either postpone investing in the market or they withdraw the investment. So they will sell their shares in a company and realize that profit and then transfer it into their account for, as an emergency fund, right? Especially since the cost of living has gone up now. This unfortunately has the impact of when other investors see that other investors in the market are selling large quantities of shares a panic starts to happen and people start to fear what might happen to the share price because they've seen oh the market price has now gone down for this company so we down 10 percent and it just keeps dropping so what happens is people panic they sell more and the market price dips even further which causes even more retail investors to panic and sell hence we're seeing the significant drop in share prices and cryptocurrency at the moment Many of you are probably wondering what you should be doing when the market crashes even further, right? Well, my what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep buying. So if you've watched my first video, Investing for Beginners, I mentioned that one of the key points is to dollar cost average your way into a market, right? So what that simply means is that if you've got 10,000 Rand or $10,000 to invest into an index fund, right? Instead of investing the full fee in January, what you do is you split that over 10 months. So you invest 1,000 Rand or $1,000 each month. You, what will happen is you will start buying in at different price points. So when the market dips, you buy. When the market dips even further, you buy. When the market increases, you buy. So you're averaging out your risk throughout the 10 months. So if the market crashes, you're not as heavily impacted because when you bought at the low, you're actually in a profit. So it's offsetting some of your losses. Not to overcomplicate things, what I would advise is if you have invested in a position and you fully believe in that company that you've invested in, continue investing, especially with cryptocurrencies. The market is extremely volatile. That thing crashes on a weekly, monthly basis like you'd never believe. So you just keep buying in and buying in. Inevitably, the market will go up. Yes, thanks for watching. I've tried to keep the video as short and simple as possible. If you've enjoyed the content and you understood everything and there's anything more that you'd like to know going forward, please let me know down in the comments below. I will read your comments and I'll try to reply to all of them and I'll definitely take your advice into mind. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll really appreciate it. It will help out with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you guys. Keep well.